seconds and counting. Hey, what's up, guys? Clutch Entertainment here, back with another video. And today, I will be previewing the Houston Texans matchup on Sunday versus the New Orleans Saints at home at NRG Stadium. I wouldn't necessarily say this is a must-win game for the Texans, but it certainly would set up a lot for them. Um, obviously, they started off the season being two and two. Uh, they had won their previous two games before their loss to the Atlanta Falcons, where they lost on a game-winning field goal by Young Show Ku. Uh, the Falcons game wasn't necessarily like a disappointment. I would really, you know, jot it more down to inconsistent play. I felt like the Texans were able to move the ball at times. The defense definitely got their stops. Um, you know, that was probably the defense's best performance um, with stopping the run. You know, they did a really good job of, of neutralizing Bijan Robinson, Tyler Algier, Desmond Ritter on the ground as a part of the Falcons' a rushing attack. So um, we come out of this loss against the Falcons with a sense of optimism. CJ Stroud, you know, did technically, you know, still drove down the field, scored the go-ahead touchdown with a minute and 50 seconds to go on that, you know, beautiful lofty pass into the end zone to Dalton Schultz on a little dig and go. All that was great. All that was cool. But now it's time to face off against the New Orleans Saints. Saints are coming off a 34-0 to win in New England against the Patriots. Utter domination over a Bill Belichick team. Um, in this game, though, Derek Carr only had 183 passing yards. Derek Carr has only had a very minimal passing yards over the past three games. It's the Packers, when they lost, they had 103. That's the Bucks when they lost at home, 127 passing yards. Um, this offense is not necessarily a dynamic offense. Um, the one thing they do um, have in New Orleans is kind of a mixture of, of personnel packages. They ran 27 different personnel packages so far this season, so it's going to be a tough task for D'Amico Ryans. Kind of figured things out, um, but if there's one guy who's capable of doing it, it's D'Amico Ryans. He's going to get his defense ready to play. Like I guess I really felt the, the performance last week was was totally fine by the Texans. Um, I don't think this should be anything too difficult. Um, obviously, you have maybe, I guess, better receiving threats you know, and Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, or Solave, or Rashid Shaheed. Um, but this passing attack, like I said, hasn't really shown to be as dangerous as it could be, just based on a roster standpoint. Well, let's get to injuries real quick before we move on. Uh, Tank Dell, who suffered a concussion in in the you know the closing drive of the first half. Uh, he had two did not spits. On Wednesday and Thursday in practice, and on Friday he was limited in practice. Obviously, with a concussion, it's questionable for Sunday's game. But I would like to think that he wouldn't play because the Texans are also entering their bye week right after this game, so they could rest him a little bit if they want to. There, uh, Christian Harris is set to return uh, from his concussion that he missed last week's game with. And Shaquille Griffin, who missed last week's game with a late scratch with calf injury is also ready to go. Javier Thomas, who practiced the full last week, did not play. Practice full again this week. It looks like he is set to play. Would be shocked if he didn't. And then Robert Woods, who had a ribs injury, um, was limited on Thursday. A full participation on Friday, I would expect him to play, along with Noah Brown, who was returning from injury reserve, like groin injury. That'll help a little bit with the Tank Dell injury. But with Tank Dell being out, Ultimately, I would expect John Mechie to also get that was wide receiver three, wide receiver two reps, whatever you want to call it at this point. Robert Woods kind of has his own sense, don't roll, if you will, um, in that regard. And in terms of the Saints, they don't really have any major injuries, but uh, it looks like Jawan Johnson is out for the game. He's their tight end, uh, kind of a more of a receiving threat. Bonnie Johnson Jr., I'm sure everyone remembers him, the guy who requested a trade from the Houston Texans. He's played safety and special teams for the Saints. He's going to be out on Sunday. Adam Prentice, JT Gray, and Landon Young are also out for the Saints. On Sunday, looks like Chris Olave has still been dealing with a little bit of a toe injury, so I guess you can moderate 
moderate that a little bit. Monitor that, if you will. Um, but yeah, the keys of the game for the Houston Texans really to me is just kind of getting back to the ways that they won their games. Um, they started fast against the Jags. They started fast against the Steelers. Uh, they showed creativity with those games. They weren't showing a conviction to run the ball. Against the Falcons, we saw a lot of run, run, pass, run, run, pass. I put the Texans in a lot of you know, third and long, third and medium situations. They didn't have to put themselves in. Uh, honestly, it fell against the Jags and the Steelers that the Texans weren't even really facing a lot of third down situations. I'm sure they were able to convert on most of them still, but at the same token, um, they weren't really struggling. Um, the offense definitely was very inconsistent, struggled to run the ball, and when you struggle to run the ball, you can't just go run, run, pass, because you're going to put themselves in bad situations. Um, but defensively, the Houston Texans just need to mix things up a little bit. Um, you know, I will continue to give the Falcons credit for how they were able to throw the ball against the Houston Texans. Over 320 passing yards, he was easily his the best game of his career. But at the end of the day, I'd be lying if I said that they, you know the Falcons didn't have a game plan for what was pretty much a vanilla defense, unfortunately. I hate to say it, but it's true. Um, there was a lot of cover three, a lot of cover four. Um, it's really just the Texans bringing four guys, not even like loading the box too. It was just simple base, cover three, cover four. Could that have been because of, you know, Shaq Griffin and Derek Stingley already being out at cornerback? Maybe. I still don't think that's the way to go. I think Kadarek Kadar Holman did a great job anyways. But um, point is, is you got to mix things up. Not saying you have to run cover two or something you don't necessarily like. Um, just you know, bring pressure, bring bluff blitzes. You know, give looks that will confuse the defense and make it hard for Derek Carr to diagnose things. I think that if they can do that, they can get back to their winning style of football. Um, you know, like I said, I don't think that this game is necessarily going to be tough. I don't think that this game is. If this is a very even matchup, I don't see either team really going to be able to blow out each other. This is going to be a close game, very, very similar to the Falcons game, if you will. It's going to come down to the last possession. It's going to come down to the little thing. It's going to come down to the little things that you put in schematically, game plan-wise. Um, the Texans got outcoached last week. It'll be interesting to see and watch if they get outcoached again. Um, this week, I'm going to go... With a prediction of the Saints winning by a score of 23 to 17. Um, I just really am not sure what we're going to get from this Houston Texans team. Being consistent is very hard to do in the NFL. The Texans are a young team. We got out coached last week. It's going to take a lot to prove that they can consistently win football games. Um, you know, being two and four. At the bye week isn't the worst thing ever. They have a relatively easy schedule the rest of the way. The Texans have got to figure things out now, figure things out fast if they actually want to accomplish anything this season. That's going to be it for today's video. Drop your game prediction down below in the comments. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.